Well, the well-known theologian Willie Nelson remarked, when I started counting my blessings, my whole life turned around. You go, oh, that's deep. It is deep. Don't let the power of that simple truth escape you this morning. This past Thursday was Thanksgiving Day, a national holiday in our country which was originally established for giving thanks to God for counting our blessings or reflecting on all that we are grateful for. And the day has since become a time for lots of other things besides just that original simple, sincere idea. And I'm not interested in railing against what this holiday has become. I don't like to sit through those kinds of things. I don't think you do either. Thanksgiving can be whatever you and I choose to make it, regardless of what others may do with it. It might come as a, as a surprise to some to hear that the Bible doesn't command us to observe a day of thanksgiving on the fourth Thursday of November each year. It's not in there. People made up this holiday, not God. And since we made it up, we can also decide how it's to be observed. Eating a turkey-centric feast with family and friends, watching parades on television and football games, plotting strategies for hitting the best sales on a Black Friday, those are all well within the rules for Thanksgiving Day. There's nothing inherently sinful or wrong about any of that. It would be good for the religious legalists among us to remember that. They'll be a lot less grumpy and others will be much more inclined to celebrate with them. What I'd like to do today is remind us of the importance of being thankful every day and encourage us to live our lives with an attitude of thankfulness, or if you like rhymes, an attitude of gratitude. The Lord wants us to look at our world through a lens of thanksgiving. He wants us to flavor everything in our life with thankfulness. 1 Thessalonians 5.15 Paul wrote, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. We can agonize over what God's will is for our life when we're faced with making decisions. Should I do this or should I do that? Should I go here or should I go there? Well, right here in these verses, we have the trifecta of God's will for us, the triple crown of God's will for us, the hat trick of God's will for us, the triple play of God's will for us. God's will for us is this. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. I can't think of a more powerful attitude-adjusting three-pointer. Can you? Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances. I mean, we could easily just call it a day right there this morning and go home. Want to do it? <laughs> if we would take hold of these three commands and, and just do them, what a profound difference it would make in our lives. Well, since we're on the topic of thanksgiving today, let's take a closer look at the third one. Give thanks in all circumstances. It doesn't matter what the circumstances are. Good or bad, we're to give thanks. This is God's will for us in Christ. Can that really be true? I mean, can it really be possible giving thanks in all circumstances? This is not the only place in the Bible where this is taught. We find this taught over and over again in the Bible, both in direct commands and through stories. Flip over to Ephesians 5.17. It tells us there, Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart 
to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have the same idea here that we find in the passage in 1 Thessalonians. We're commanded to give thanks to God always and for everything. There's nothing in our life outside of our obligation to be thankful to God. The command to be thankful has no restrictions or conditions attached to it. It doesn't say be thankful when you feel like you have something to be thankful for. It doesn't say to be thankful when the circumstances in our life are good and everything is going our way. It doesn't say to be thankful when the sun is shining and our team is winning. It says give thanks to in all circumstances. It says give thanks always and for everything. Being thankful is the overriding, ever-present attitude we're to have at all times in all situations. Over in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15, it says, Through Jesus, therefore let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that openly profess his name. There's that word again, continually. We're to continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, of grateful adoration and celebration. Think about the many stories in the Bible and how a grateful attitude is praised while an attitude of complaining and entitlement is condemned. I mean, way back to the very beginning, Abel, he brought an offering to the Lord as an expression of genuine gratitude, and it pleased the Lord. His brother Cain brought an offering out of obligation, and the Lord was not pleased with it. Abraham embraced God's promises to him with grateful faith, and it was counted as righteousness. Joseph was sold into slavery by his own brothers, and he spent years in a prison, wrongly accused of being a rapist. But he reflected back on all of that with gratitude, knowing the Lord had used it to save many lives. God rescued the Israelite people from Egyptian slavery under the leadership of Moses. But they complained and they whined during the entire trip across the desert toward the promised land. And so a trip that would have taken a little more than a year instead took 40 years. That's a good story to share with your kids when you're on a vacation and you're driving, and they keep going, are we there yet? And you go, let me tell you a story. <laughs> this trip that could take a week could easily take 40 years if, you know, attitudes aren't different. <laughs> there are many stories, but you get the idea. Well, how can we be thankful in all circumstances, giving thanks always to God for everything? On the surface, it might sound a little bit like crazy talk to say something like that. Obviously, there are things in our lives that we don't like. There are things that we aren't expected to like. I mean, how can we be thankful when facing the death of a loved one? How can we be thankful when we have a life-threatening disease? How can we be thankful when we've lost our job? How can we be thankful when... Our house is burned down. How can we be thankful when we have been robbed? How can we be thankful when we have been terribly abused? How can we be thankful when our marriage is failing? How can we be thankful when we have a sick and dying child? How can we be thankful when we don't have enough food to eat? Is the Bible teaching that we are to laugh in the face of disaster and loss and pain? Are we supposed to be a Pollyanna about even the most awful stuff in our life? Smiling and just saying, oh, praise the Lord. You know, my life is caving in. I mean, it's such a blessing. No. 
The Bible's not telling us to be detached and mindless fakes about the realities of life. Or not to pretend things are other than they really are. The Bible's teaching us that we are to have an attitude of thankfulness through every circumstance of life. See, here's the big idea. Thankfulness is not a reaction to stuff. It's an attitude, a point of view, a perspective that we hold on to in life. We're to see our life in a different kind of context, a larger one, one that's within the sovereign hands of a good God. When we embrace God's sovereignty over all things, the truth that He is infinitely good and that He loves us perfectly, then we can be thankful in all circumstances. We know that every circumstance in our life is under His loving, watchful eye, and somehow, some way, He is bringing good out of it ultimately. We take hold of that by faith. Romans 8, 28, that wonderful promise that we have. We know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. We can always be thankful with that truth. We can always find room for thanking God, no matter what the situation is that we find ourselves in. I mean, there have been people who have sang songs of praise to God while being burned at the stake for, the, for their faith in Christ. And there are other people who choose to complain and whine their way through life while sitting in the back seat of a Rolls Royce eating caviar. Which kind of person are you and I going to be? Being thankful is a choice we can make. I like to remind myself of the story of the real pilgrims at Thanksgiving time. And I've told this story before, and uh, I like to reflect on it, and we'll tell it again even now. They are an example of people who are thankful in all circumstances, those original pilgrims. The story goes something like this. In the early part of September of 1620, a group of 102 passengers and some 30 crew members set sail on a small ship called the Mayflower from Plymouth, England. Their intended destination was northern Virginia in the new land of America. The reason for making the journey was to find a home where they could worship God in freedom from persecution and the imposed methods of the National Church of England. It's hard to imagine how these 102 passengers and 30-some crew members, along with their belongings, sailing equipment, food and water for the trip, all fit onto that little ship. See, I've been on a life-size replica of the Mayflower, and it's not a very big ship. There's a picture of it there, and you can see the people on it and around it to give you some scale. It was nothing like the luxury cruise liners of today that people sail the oceans in. It was not a Royal Caribbean type of thing. It was a very tight, smushed up place that all these people shared for some two and a half months on a journey across the ocean. And when they finally arrived in the New World, they probably thought the worst of their journey was over. Unfortunately, they had been blown off course by these harsh North Atlantic winds, and they ended up at Cape Cod, many miles north of where they had intended to land. Rebuffed by the weather, realizing that it would require a significant additional voyage to travel south to their original destination, they decided to stay put and establish their homes where they were at. They sailed across the bay to what is now modern-day Plymouth, Massachusetts and set about the task of surviving the harsh winter. They anchored there in December of 1620. My family traveled back to Connecticut to spend the Thanksgiving holiday with the Bunnell family. 
when they were living there some 16 years ago. You might recognize some of those people in the photo. I'm not in the photo, remember? One of the dads always is not in a photo because he's taking the photo. You see that big old uh, thing that Steve's hanging on to? That's what they used to call a video camera. <laughs> While we were there, our families, they took, we took a field trip to Plymouth where we saw that life-size replica of the Mayflower ship and a reconstruction of the first settlement of the pilgrims. And surely reminded me the other day of that trip and how bone-chilling cold it was. We were there in late November. I was wearing a modern-day winter coat designed to keep a person warm in cold weather, and that cold still cut right through it. I can't imagine what it was like for those people to face that bitter cold winter in 1620, living in makeshift shelters thrown together of driftwood and reeds. By the end of that first winter, there were only 52 of the original 102 passengers still alive. Half of the original group had died that winter of disease and starvation. But those who survived, they celebrated what has traditionally been considered the first Thanksgiving at their first harvest the following year in the New World in 1621. Every person in that group could look out their simple little shelter and remember the paved streets and the beautiful buildings of the places that they had left behind in England. Every person could remember the material valuables that they had left behind or had been lost on that trip. Every person could remember the family and friends and neighbors that they had left behind. Every person had memories of the suffering and the pain of the voyage across the sea in that cramped little ship. Every person could remember that bitter cold winter. Every person had lost someone they loved that first winter when half of their group had died. The suffering and the pain and the loss that those people endured is difficult for us to imagine. But those people gave thanks to God. And they didn't just give thanks to God on that first Thanksgiving celebration. They had given thanks to God all along the way. More stuff doesn't equal more gratitude. Ironically, with the comforts and the conveniences and the excesses of our modern-day society, rather than becoming a more grateful people, we seem to have become increasingly ungrateful and selfish and discontent. Having more stuff doesn't make a person more thankful. We can be thankful people with or without stuff. Hannah Whittle Smith wrote, The soul that gives thanks can find comfort in everything. The soul that complains can find comfort in nothing. So the big idea again is thankfulness is an attitude, a perspective, a point of view about life rather than a reaction or response to stuff and situations. The 19th century preacher Charles Spurgeon, he once said, as long as a man is alive and out of hell, he cannot have any reason to complain. What Spurgeon said comes off harsh for our modern sensibilities, but he was making a point that we don't want to miss. Our main purpose in this life is not to find happiness in this world, but to know God the one who made us, and to enjoy him forever. If we make happiness our goal, we are going to have a lot of trouble finding it. If we make Christ our goal, 
then in knowing him, we will also find true happiness. What does being thankful accomplish in our life? I think of three things. The first is being thankful makes us peaceful. Philippians 4, verse 4 through 7, it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Well, why does prayer with thanksgiving calm us and give us peace? Well, in the act of praying and giving thanks, we're rolling the worries and the burdens of our life over onto the Lord's shoulders rather than trying to carry them all by ourselves. We're acknowledging his goodness and his sovereignty. We're acknowledging our own limitations. And we're opening our hands to receive the Lord's help. We're putting our trust in him. When we put our trust in a great, big, good God, rather than our own limited self, peace results. Through prayer and thanksgiving, we're adjusting our attitude from one of self-centered entitlement to humble gratitude. Self-centered entitlement, it never leads to peace. It's stressful and it's small-minded. See, the world, it doesn't revolve around me. So I will be in a perpetual state of disappointment and frustration and anger if I keep trying to put myself in the center of it. Second, being thankful creates contentment. Being thankful, it changes our focus. Rather than focusing on what we don't have, we focus on what we do have. We remember the goodness of God in our life now rather than thinking about what we think we don't have and what we ought to have. Philippians 4, verse 11. Paul's writing about his own life, and he says, I'm not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstances I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Being thankful is a learned response to the situations in our life. Paul said he had learned to be content, and Learning to be content begins with learning to be thankful in whatever situation we're in. It's interesting, isn't it, to consider that the weekend that our country has set aside to be thankful is also the same weekend that we have Black Friday and Cyber Monday, and we're going to have to start changing it to Black Month. I mean, they I don't know about you, but my... The email box started filling up with stuff. I mean, the 1st of November rather than the day after Thanksgiving. I mean, I just got buried this year with stuff. But this same week, a time when merchants are working overtime to create a feeling of discontent in our life. We humans are funny creatures. We lift ourselves up with one hand and we burn ourselves down with the other. All at the same time. Third, being thankful is a form of worshiping God. One of the clearest expressions of worship is to thank God for his goodness to us. Throughout the Bible, we see that giving God thanks is an integral part of worship, a genuine sense of gratitude towards God. It motivates us to offer up praise and worship to Him. We can't worship God without giving Him thanks. They go together. Psalm 69, 30. I will praise God's name in song and glorify Him with thanksgiving. Psalm 100. Verse 4, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. I 
I end with a quote from Shakespeare. Not that I've ever read Shakespeare. <laughs> but you can Google <laughs> quotes about Thanksgiving and a Shakespeare quote will come up and you look like you really got something going on. So. <laughs> oh Lord, that lends me life. Lend me a heart replete with thankfulness. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you for this reminder today for us to be thankful. That we would have an attitude of thankfulness. We pray, God, that you would instill this into our hearts, Lord. That we would be a grateful people. That we'd be thankful in all things, in all circumstances, in every situation, Lord. Lord, I pray that we would take that attitude and share it with others. That we would be that positive, thankful, grateful attitude and spirit in the places that we frequent. Whether it be at work or in our homes or in our neighborhoods, Lord. We are grateful to you, Father. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.